So um, maybe I'll start with Professor Kanjila. Thank you. Um, uh, the session is about the embedding HPS health policy and system research. That is how embedded uh, research can help the system and the performance. So I will focus primarily on the embedding part. Now, the word embedding the research itself is, you know, it can raise lots of controversy. What do we mean by that? Well, that when we say embedding, primarily to me it is that it's not in opening an office in a government health department where some researchers are you know, busy doing some you know, work or something. This is much beyond that. It's much more than that. Uh, it's basically, to me, it's a process by which a, 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 a system is uh, established, a, a mechanism is established by which uh, scientific evidence is generated, right questions are asked and the answers are given by trying to connect him, people like him to uh, give the answer, right answers and then also see that how these answers actually uh, input the performance. Uh, so this is a system, it can be, uh, you know, in a virtual world, it can be uh, outside the Department of Health, uh, and it can be anywhere, but it is within the system a research mechanism is established. Uh, do we have that system uh, right now? Uh, if we ask the question 10 years ago, probably we would say no, but now things are changing, and I clearly see that, you know, for example, the first step towards that establishing a research unit in the Department of Health at the central level is a big step. And I think that that uh, is not sufficient, but that, that's, that's a very good step. Uh, problem, of course, is lies not in the central level, but in the state level, actually. And the state level, there are problems, I'm coming to that. But meanwhile, you can see some results already, even at the state level, where embedding, you know, state governments are trying to in involve uh, the researchers and the research institutions there. Uh, the benefits of research, of course, nobody can contest that. You know, there are lots of examples where the health system research actually benefited the programs, starting from 1980s when first the uh, out-of-pocket expenditure studies came in, and then people stuck first, rejected those studies, neglected those studies, but ultimately, uh, they came, they recognized that it's, it, it's yes, uh, all of our expenditure is a major source of financing in India. Similarly, the focus on equity, focus on poverty, uh, focus on more uh, social justice related research actually made uh, the policy makers take some bold steps and of course uh, the design of NRHM reflects that. Now, uh, the state level, there are, if you see right now, there are several models now in so far as that embedding is concerned. Uh, one model is going on is basically that, that it's supported by the development partners, some technical agencies are working there, which primarily support the government uh, with uh, research evidences. And this is uh, entirely an outside agency and gradually coming closer to the government and trying to uh, increase the performance. Yeah. There are lots of examples, for example, recently we, we visited three states, Bihar, Odisha, NP, where we saw that the technical agencies there, they are uh, generating lots of evidences and trying to improve performance. Uh, many of the evidences uh, uh, are not really utilized, but some of the evidences are utilized. Uh, what we see clearly that a positive atmosphere is there, there is a growing hunger for uh, evidence, scientific evidences, even among the state bureaucrats. Uh, primarily, uh, the innovation is brought in a new paradigm where the system has to be more professional, more uh, science-oriented, and the age-old information system uh, is now revamped, and the outside agencies are being included, involved in this process. So there is a positive environment there, the only thing that we have to take advantage of that. The problem in this case, uh, the factors which actually uh, act as a kind of barrier, retarding factors, 
uh, primarily is that, um, first of all, there is capacity, the lack of capacity. We don't expect the government departments or even in the system uh, to do meaningful research. They don't have the capacity. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the research institutions are, you know, they are also uh, having capacity problems. They are, you know, they are historically, they focus on you know, particular types of research, uh, especially the social science, social science researchers. And uh, their capacity to understand the health system uh, is also limited. Uh, as a result, there is a capacity problem. But the major problem, major barrier is basically lack of understanding, mutual understanding between the users and the producers of knowledge. And uh, primarily because the, the system policy makers, system actors, they open uh, to understand what the researchers are saying or they don't see it relevant at all. Uh, whereas the researchers also find that, okay, I have done my job and then now you, it's up to you whether you use it or not. That kind of issue, long time actually, separated them and kind of created a barrier uh, to each other. Fortunately and encouragingly, this culture is changing, a new culture is coming up and what, when you see that, many of the uh, bureaucrats are even trained in uh, award or in soft things and now they are now uh, showing great hunger for uh, more the evidences. So there is a, a positive sign there. Uh, there is also a problem of an institution uh, lack of platform where the uh, different stakeholders in the knowledge economy can interact with each other. Uh, they are separated by default, it is as if uh, they are separated apart. So, uh, therefore, what we have to do now, you know, the next step, and I'll close now, what, what we have to do, I think, is doing three things. First of all, uh, decentralize the, 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 the research, the health system research uh, from, from center to states. Uh, that's where the things are happening. So state level, there should be, there must be uh, focus now. Uh, the state health resource centers were actually designed in that, in that line, but unfortunately, in many state health resource centers are not working in that direction. Uh, so probably it's time to uh, look at them. Second thing is that capacity building, uh, capacity building of not only the system side or policy side, uh, it's basically the researchers themselves need to build their capacity primarily to understand the health system. And this type of program of this zone, uh, probably it will address this problem. And third one is basically, which is very important, is that uh, there should be a platform where there will be negotiation, role negotiation uh, between the structures and policymakers and mutual understanding. It could be internet based, it could be uh, some meeting place, somewhere, some time, they should meet each other. And try to see that what are the rules of the game here. Uh, the researcher, in, on the one hand, there should not be a, another department, another wing of the department. Uh, there should not be again an extended arm of the department. On the other, on the other extreme, they should not go uh, drift away so far that you know, they, are, they, are, they become irrelevant. So there should be a balance there, uh, and by this way, they have to come together. So thank you very much.